Let me uh, invite our kids to head toward children's worship, our kindergartners through fifth graders, if you want to head that way. And while they're making their way out, if you who are staying in here, we go ahead and pull out your Bibles with me and turn to the book of Exodus in the Old Testament, Exodus chapter 20. Exodus chapter 20. Y'all doing good today? Talk to me. Y'all doing all right? Good, good. It's the day the Lord's made. Let's rejoice and let's be glad in it. Amen. We get to be here together. We don't have to do this, but we get to do it every Sunday. We look back to last week and we talked about the importance of the Sabbath and the importance of worshiping together. And I'll just remind you that God knew you were going to be here uh, way before you ever existed. God has ordained the days of our lives. God knows the number of hairs on our heads. God knows everything about us. He knows our beginning. He knows our end. He knows everything. So you are here by divine appointment. It's not an accident that you walk through the doors this morning. God has an appointment with you this morning. And so I want us to get into God's Word. Awesome worship songs, huh? It's good to sing God's songs. Exodus chapter 20 verse 12. This is the fifth message in our series that we've called 10, where we're stepping through the Ten Commandments. And today, this message is about honoring and respecting your parents. I'm going to be real honest with you. I have preached at least 25, maybe 30 messages over the last 10 years since this church has existed on godly parenting on how to be a godly parent, how to be a good parent, what the Bible says about being a parent. But rarely do we reverse the roles and talk about how to be a godly child. And whether you are five years old, and you're probably not if you're in here right now, or you're 16 years old, or if you're a grown adult, it doesn't really matter The bottom line is you need to have a proper relationship with your parents. You hear me? doesn't matter how old you are, what you've gone through in life. You need to have a proper relationship with your parents. This command, this fifth command, starts a strand of commands that are much different than the first four that we have looked at over the last four weeks. The first four had to do, and you can kind of look back at them in Exodus chapter 20, the first four had to do with our relationship with God. Those those commands were, uh, have no other gods before me. That's what the first one was. The second one was, do not worship idols. The third one was, do not take God's name in vain. The fourth one was, honor the Sabbath, keep the Sabbath. But starting today, we see commands that don't that certainly have to do with how we relate to God but they also have to do with how we relate with other people. And I want you to hear this this morning. I believe in my heart that there is significance in the order of the commands. I believe with these first four where God is saying it matters how it all goes down, how your relationship with with me is. I think that as God is saying that He's saying that that has to come first. It matters how you relate to me. He's saying how you love me, if you don't get that right, then you're never going to get your relationships with other people right. We'll never love others if we don't love God properly, is what God is telling us. Your relationship with your wife, your relationship with your husband, your relationship with your kids, your relationship with your parents, your co-workers, your friends, they can't be right, God is saying, until your relationship with me is right. And, and don't, don't misappropriate or misinterpret what I'm trying to say this morning But don't we misuse our relationships all the time? And it's and usually, I'll just say all the time, it's because we are not in the right place with God. We judge others, we criticize others, we lie to other people, we cheat other people, and the list goes on. We point out the speck in other people's eyes and we forget that we have a log sticking out of our own. So the first four commands come first for a reason because it matters how our relationship is with God. 
I'm just going to step out there and say it this morning. Here it is, Josh, bottom line. If you're new here, that's my catchphrase. I say it every week, obviously. I didn't realize it. And Josh made fun of me when he preached for me a couple of weeks ago. And he thought he could get away with it, but I watched him live. Live stream. It was out of love, he says. I love you too in God's way. <laughs> listen, if you are here this morning, I want you to listen real close to me. If you are here this morning and you are struggling in a relationship with someone else, a child, a parent, a spouse, a co-worker, a friend, the list goes on, I bet it's because you're struggling with one of the first four commands. I bet, I bet you could look at that and look at how your relationship is with God, and I bet it starts there. So let's look at where we are now. And just a side note, as we read this, we're looking at one verse today. As we read this, I want you to notice that this is the first command that has a promise attached to it. There's a promise with this command. Now, let me kind of make sure you're awake for this one. Um, I, I realized as a pastor, I can't pass out Red Bull at the door. Um, so <laughs> the pastors have to have a few tools in our hip pocket. So let's stand up for the reading of God's Word. Let's stand up together and let's do this in honor of the Lord. This is from the ESV version. I've, it's, it's on the screen. Let's read this together. Honor your father and your mother, that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. Father, we come before you this morning, Lord. And I pray over this verse. Father, I pray that as we spend a few minutes here together this morning in your word, Lord, that you would teach us from this verse. This may be an easy verse to read for some people, and it may be on the opposite end of the spectrum for some others. This may be very difficult this morning. And so, Lord, I pray, Lord, that you would do a great work through this, something that I couldn't do or no one else in here could do. But, Father, that you would do a great work through your word. Lord, would you bring conviction? Would you bring encouragement? God, would you bring changed lives through it? Lord, we pray this in Christ's name. God's people said together. Amen. Amen. Good deal. I want to talk to you straight up for just a second, okay? By nature, I'm going to admit something about myself. By nature, I think that sometimes it's a strength, but sometimes I also think it could be a fault by nature, I desire to protect people's feelings. I really do. I, God geared me that way. Some of you that know me well, you know I'm not afraid to just say it like it is. Sometimes I've, in, in 20 years of ministry, I've had to speak truth into people's lives, and I've had people speak truth into my life at times. Um, got an amen from the front row there. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, but by nature... I don't like to hurt people's feelings. I don't wake up in the morning saying, hey, I'm going to get to hurt somebody's feelings today. That sounds awesome. Um, that's, that's, not, that's not what I do. It's the last thing I want to do. But I've realized that when you commit to preaching the whole of Scripture, and that's what we're here to do, isn't it? We're not going to beat around the bush. We're not going to leave part of it out. We're not going to tiptoe around it. I've realized that as you do that, that sometimes it's encouraging, but sometimes it hurts. Um, and if we're not willing to preach the whole of Scripture, then we don't want any part of it. I don't want any part of it, and you shouldn't want any part of it. So we need to speak what is right, and we need to speak what is true, even though when you do that, and here's, here's what I'm saying, when you do that, it's not always popular. It's not always easy to hear. It's not always encouraging on the surface, but I think you'll find that when you get into the whole of God's Word, that in the end it always brings encouragement because it's right. God's Word doesn't always give solutions that match up with the common way of dealing with things that you will find in our culture. So, in light of that, I'm just going to talk straight up for just a second. This command, command number five, like I said earlier, is easy for some people, but it's very hard for other people. For some of you today, it's going to start out and you're going to say, that's a yeah, that's right, Murph Sermon. You, 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 you preach it and teach it. For some of you, when we start talking about honor your father and your mother, 
it's the opposite end of the spectrum for you. You say, no way. You don't know my father. And you don't know my mother. You don't know how bad of a mom I had growing up. You don't know how absent my dad was and how ungodly he was. Not all of you grew up in good situations. Some of you have very bad memories. And listen, some of you kids, some of you teenagers, you may be living through it right now. You may be living in that situation right now. And some of you young adults, you're in this mode right now, you're in this mode of life where, you're, where you say, I am going to do it much different than my parents did it. Everything they did, I'm going to do the opposite. So I know all of that going into this message today. I'm, I'm not going to stand up here and act like that's not the case. For some people in here, growing up was almost like a fairy tale. I can, I can relate to that. Not perfection, but you had parents who loved you. You loved them. Everybody loved Jesus. Sure, you had some problems, but it just seemed like God always worked you through them. But many of you had anything but that. Some of you were abandoned. Some of you didn't know one or both of your parents. Some of you were abused. Some of you were neglected. Some of you weren't taken care of. Many of you have voids and scars, even to this day, that you try to block out and you don't deal with. And it comes from your parents, the people that should have loved you the most, but they didn't. So, like I said, I don't want to hurt you any more than you've already been hurt. But I do want you to hear something today that I'm convinced you need to hear. Listen to me real close. There is no exclusion clause in this verse and with this command. The Word of God does not say, honor your father and mother unless. It doesn't say that. It doesn't say, honor your father and your mother unless. It clearly says, honor your father and mother, and your days will be long in the land that I've given you. I know some of you have scars from your parents that you will take to your grave, but I also know this. This verse is going to be on the screen. I also know this. I know this in my heart because it says it in God's Word. I know that Romans 8.28 says, and we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good for those who are called according to His purpose. Do you believe that, church? I believe that God sees far deeper than our problems. I believe that God sees far deeper than our disappointments. I believe in my heart that God sees far deeper than our struggles here on this earth, and He causes all things to work together for the good of those who are called according to His purpose. 